Did you know that 24 hours ago, this great looking decorative art platter was nothing more than some silica sand and lime? Well, today we're going to a hot glass factory and we're going to see how a decorative art platter like this was made. It starts like this, a glowing bulb of molten sand heated to more than 2,000 degrees and molded onto the end of this hollow rod. And in two and a half hours time, glassmaker Jim Bowman will heat, mold, and shape it into an incredible work of art. As you can see from some of his other pieces, no two platters are alike. Each pattern is its own unique swirling kaleidoscope of colors. Well, Jim, making this decorative art glass really looks complicated. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about how you go about making something like this? Well, the furnace is just full of clear glass. And if you want to put color in the glass, you have to add it at, with various techniques throughout the process. Right here on this table, we have several colors. This is, a, this is a yellow powdered glass and blue powdered glass and little chips of a transparent green and a couple more shades of blue, some little black strings and some more little yellow chips. Jim heats the glass to more than 2,000 degrees. 20 years of experience tells him when he's gotten it hot enough. Now it's time to add the color. It may look like a random process, but he has a specific pattern in mind. See, this, this is like doing a painting. It's like the real artsy part of it. We have to get all these colors heated in. Jim will make dozens of trips between the furnace and the roller table throughout this process, constantly reheating, shaping, and blowing the glass. Now, Jim, the glass doesn't pick up any of the uh, burnt fibers from the wood? No. The, uh, the hot glass forms a layer of steam in between the glass and the wood, so it just rolls in this little layer of steam, and it, it kind of shapes and uh, smooths out the uh, surface of the glass. Put a little bit more air in it. See, I just blow and I cap the uh, mouthpiece with my thumb and the hot air just expands. And the cool air as it goes down the shaft, it picks up heat and expands and causes yeah. the bubble to form a little deeper, I noticed. Yeah. Okay, now we're about ready to do a, an overlay. We're going to cover all that color with white. See this, all this color and, and design that we put on there ends up being on the inside of the plate. An overlay is a second layer of glass that will completely cover the primary piece. Jim's assistant, Scott Work, has been busy heating and prepping the bulb of white glass that will be used for the overlay. After sufficient heating, both pieces of glass are coupled together. See, I'm sticking this uh, white bubble onto the end of the first bubble I made, and I'm going to crack it off of this uh, pipe that's got the white bubble on it, and I'm going to actually turn the white bubble inside out to uh, cover up the other one. This is an overlay technique. Jim will now reheat and roll the pieces several times until they become a single unit. In a matter of minutes, the overlay is complete. As Jim slowly opens the piece up, you can see the design taking shape. I know more or less what it's going to turn out like because I've been working on a series of these for a while. This piece will be put on hold for a while, stored in a kiln that will keep it at a constant 950 degrees. This allows Jim to begin work on a second piece. Using a device called an optic mold, he forms ridges on the glass that will eventually become the outer edges of the platter. What are you doing now, Jim? Now we're putting a thread wrap of this uh, dark ruby glass on there that's uh, going to end up as little spots. And because I have these ridges from that star-shaped mold, when I put it back in the glory hole, those little threads of glass, where they're, where they're just touching on the ridges, they'll all melt in between and they'll all pull back to the ridges and make little spots. Jim and Scott will now break off the end of this piece in order to open it up. Now, yeah, come on, baby. There we go. That's what it's supposed to do. See, there's a little hole in there. Scott has retrieved the center piece from the kiln. Now he and Jim will attach the two pieces together. It's all right. 
Jim and Scott will now work feverishly reheating, rolling, and blowing the piece. Stop. At this stage, it's about the size and shape of a volleyball, but eventually it will flatten out as our decorative platter starts taking shape. A quick blast from a blowtorch ensures that the piece is evenly heated as Jim and Scott prepare to start opening the platter up. As we reach the final stages of this labor-intensive process, we get an idea of what this platter will look like. Okay, this is it. After one last reheating, the platter finally flattens out as Jim and Scott prepare for the trickiest part of the job. One wrong move here and the piece could be a total loss. Okay, you ready? All right. Can we take a look at it? Sure. You ready? Yep. Stand back, it's hot. The temperature inside this kiln is 915 well, degrees job. Fahrenheit. The platter will stay in here overnight as the kiln gradually cools down to room temperature. The platter then will be ready to adorn the wall of someone's new house. Possibly yours. Okay.